things started out very innocently and now they're starting to evolve. <laughs> the next chapter is the Lois that I'm going to read. It's page 20. Do you remember when it first happened? When you lost your virginity? Where were you? Was there music? Was it special? Everything you'd imagine? How old were you? I was nine. Her name was Delois Mitchell. She was 11 years my senior, 20 at the time. Looking back at that breakthrough, no pun, reminds me of something my mother once said. I asked her why she was so private. She replied, the more people you invite into your house, the more trouble you let in. Mama was always extremely careful of who she invited in our home. Rarely did we have any company over. Come to think of it, I can't recall anyone ever coming over for a holiday, including relatives. The Lois and her family were a rare exception to that rule. My mother formed a nonprofit organization in her early 70s, and the Lois's mom, Tina Mitchell, assisted her in causes for the community. On occasion, Tina brought along her daughter, the Lois. I never paid the Lois any mind, save for one thing, her lips, which were jet black from smoking and kind of spooked me. Over time, Mrs. Mitchell and her mother bonded closely enough that she allowed the Lois to spend the night. The first night was when my never ended. I remember it like the raisin toast I had for breakfast yesterday. After dinner, everyone went to bed. The lowest retired in the room with my sisters. There were seven boys in two rooms, two bunk beds in each room. I slept in the lower bunk. As I was about to drift off, my door opened and I could see a woman coming through. It was dark, but I could make out that it wasn't my sister because the lowest's body, titties, were more developed. As she knelt down and began to ease towards me, I felt lumps in my stomach. First she touched my face, then she reached over and kissed me. Her lips were three times the size of mine, and when she placed her tongue in my mouth, I could taste the ashes from the remnants of cigarette tar that remained on her lips. Even now, if I dial it up, I can still taste it. After the kiss, she started touching me in bad places, caressing me while holding me down with her arms. I was frozen like a pea. She kissed my chest, stomach, and unbuttoned my pajama bottoms. Then she pulled my penis out and kissed it. Each time I trembled from anxiety, she began to play with it next and started sucking the tip. From that, I experienced an indescribable paradox of hot and cold, mixed with fear and anxiety. My head began to hurt. The cold and hot merged into a warm sensation that continued to swell towards the center of my body until, Suddenly, my insides attempted to tear out of my skin and what felt like needles were shooting out of my penis. The warm sensation changed into an arctic chilling blast that made my dick feel like a polar ice cap. My skin felt shivers while my inside was volcanic. It was the first time I ever came. I literally wanted to cry from the pain and weakness I felt. Before she slid out of the room, the Lois kissed me on the cheek and said, this is our special little secret. The next day I was maimed, completely unable to move. I told my mother I didn't feel well, so I skipped school, a very uncommon thing for me, and slept the entire day. Oddly, the same state of paraplegia that handicapped me when Dolores capped me off had me inquiring for whereabouts the entire next week, a query my mother surely must have found peculiar. But I needed those needles to shoot out of me again, <laughs> and Dolores obliged. We had sex at least 10 more times, and she was a class A freak and reckless to boot. After a while, she began taking way too many risks in front of my family. The last coming came on my 10th birthday. After my mother and father went to work, Lois came over and headed straight to my room. She gave me a birthday kiss and said, Lois, close your eyes, I have a surprise for you. What is it? Turn around and keep your eyes closed. What? Just do it. I did. She took my pants down and asked, are you ready? I'm not sure, I replied, noticeably pensive. She kissed my neck and made her way down my back. Then 